हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन मल्टी सर्वर क्विनिंग मॉडल विथ फाइनाइट क्यू हुज किंडल नोटेशन इज एम एम एस एन एफ सी एफ एस वेयर फर्स्ट एम स्टैंड फॉर पॉइजन अराइवल और एक्सपोनेंशियल इंटर अराइवल टाइम सेकेंड एम स्टैंड फॉर पॉइजन डिपार्चर और एक्सपोनेंशियल सर्विस टाइम एस स्टैंड फॉर मल्टीपल सर्वर्स मीन्स देर आर मल्टीपल सर्वर्स हु आर सर्विंग द कस्टमर एंड एन स्टैंड फॉर फाइनाइट आर लिमिटेड क्यू इट मीन्स दैट वी कैन अकोमोडेट ओनली फाइनाइट कस्टमर्स इन द सिस्टम एंड द कस्टमर आर सर्व ऑन द बेस ऑफ फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व I had already discussed this video in Hindi. If you want to watch in Hindi, I had provided link in the description. Also, I had uploaded complete video lectures on twinning theory, and I had provided the link of the playlist of videos in the description. Now, before discussing the problem, I will discuss some important methods which we are going to use while solving the problem. Friends, I will suggest you. Please watch this video step by step till end because I am going to discuss some important tricks to remember these lengthy methods. Okay, now let us start. The probability of n customers in the system in the steady state condition. If you had seen my video number seven on Kevining theory, then definitely you should know that the steady state equation when there are n customers is Pn one upon n factorial, okay, where n is the number of customer, lambda upon mu, where lambda is the average number of arrivals per unit of time in the queuing system, and mu mu is the average number of customer served per unit of time at the place of service, okay, and p zero is the number of customers in the system. That is, there is no customer in the system, and Pn is equal to this value when Number of customers are greater than zero. That means number of customer is equal to one, are greater than one, and less than number of servers. Okay. After that, when the number of customers are greater than or equal to number of servers and less than or equal to full capacity, where n represents the full capacity of the system. Okay. So in this case, we have one upon s factorial. S is the number of servers. S raised to the n minus s lambda upon mu raised to the n into p zero. Now the next method is p zero. P zero means the probability that the system shall be idle. Okay, so summation n goes to zero to s minus one. P zero is a very simple. Just you have to sum up these two probabilities. Okay, and take the inverse. Okay, here the first one summation zero to s minus one. Okay, because n is strictly less than s okay this one after that n goes to s to n this one okay and here is p0 and you have to take inverse of these values okay this is very simple to remember this and after simplifying this i will get this method now it's your choice you remember this one or this one but uh, according to my opinion this one is just easy to remember now the next one is expected number of customers in the queue now expected number of customer in the queue you have to remember this one method okay so n tends to s to capital n okay where s is the number of servers and n is the full capacity of the system n minus s into pn after simplifying this i will get this value okay now it's up to you you remember this one or this one but according to examination point of view this method is quite easy to memorize okay So, after simplifying, I will get s rho raised to the power s rho divided by s factorial one minus rho whole square into these values. Okay. Now, expected number of customers in the system. Okay. Now we know that number of customer in the system is equal to number of customer in the queue plus number of customer which are being served. Okay. So L Q plus Lambda upon mu. Here, lambda into one minus p n is the effective arrival rate. If you had seen my video number eight on Kevining theory, then definitely you will know that 
one what is one minus p n. As we know that when there when the condition is given that there are n customer in the system. Okay. In this case, we use effective arrival rate that is lambda into one minus p n, where p n is the probability of n customer in the system, where n is the maximum accommodated customer. I will discuss in detail while solving the problem. Okay. So. If you remember this one method, you have to just add this method by effective arrival rate divided by mu. You will get expected number of customer in the system. By simplifying this, you will get this one method. Now it's up to you. You remember this one or this one. Okay. Now next, expected waiting time in the system. Okay. Now, first of all, we had if we had already solved number of customers in the system. Then we just divide by effective arrival rate, okay? Lambda into one minus p n, and we will get waiting time in the system, okay? Now after that, expected waiting time in the queue. As we know that, if we take away the people's customers who are being served, okay, with in which the service is being provided. So when we take away these people's, we will get waiting time in the queue. So waiting time in the system. Minus one upon mu. Okay, so when I will put the value of W S and after simplifying, I will get L Q upon lambda into one minus P N. Now it's up to you. You remember this one or this one? Both are easy. Here you have to subtract from waiting time in the system minus one upon mu. Here you have to remember waiting time in the queue. Okay, sorry, number of customers in the queue divided by lambda. That is effective arrival rate. Now let us discuss the problem. Let there be an automobile inspection situation in which three inspection stalls. There are three inspector inspection stalls. It means that there are three servers. Okay, so I had written here S is equal to three. Okay, friends. Now assume that cars wait in such a way that when stall become vacant. The cars at the head of line pulls up to it. It means that when the stall which is serving the car became vacant after serving the car, the car is pulled for service. Okay. So the station can accommodate almost seven car at one time. Now it is given that the station can accommodate at most seven car at one time. It means that almost four cars are waiting at one time and. Three cars are being served, so the arrival pattern is poison with mean of one car. So it means that a lambda is equal to mu and n is equal to seven because maximum accommodation of car is seven. Okay, friends, and lambda is one car per minute arrival. Now after that, the service time is exponential with mean of six minute. It means that mean is one by six because There is no rate given after me. There is no rate, so I will write mu is equal to one upon six car per minutes. After that, I will calculate lambda upon mu because I am going to use lambda upon mu in most of the methods. So lambda upon mu will be one upon one by six, and it will become six. Now let us discuss the first part. The first part is find the average number of customers in queue during the peak hour. Now we have to find out. The average number of customers in the queue. Now, before discussing the expected number of customer in the queue, I will find out p zero. That is the probability that the system shall be idle. Because in most of the method, I am going to use p zero. Okay. Now we know that p zero is equal to zero to s minus one. Okay, one upon n factorial lambda upon mu raised to power n. Okay, plus n is equal to s two capital n. From these, we have to submit these to one and taking the inverse. Okay, so p zero will become. Now, after putting the value here, n is equal to s. S is given as three. So, three minus one. Okay, n factorial one upon n factorial into lambda upon mu. Lambda upon mu is equal to six. So, six raised to n plus n goes to three to seven because n is equal to three. That is, s is equal to three to capital n seven. One upon S factorial, so three factorial into three n minus s, okay, into six raised to the power n whole power minus n. 
after simplifying this okay i will get 1 upon 1141 it means that probability the system shall be idle is 1 upon 1141 now we will simplify the expected number of customer in the queue okay now we know that expected number of customer in the queue is lq which is equal to submission n goes to s to capital n here s is equal to 3 okay so s to capital n that is 7 n minus s into pn now when i will put as we know that s is 3 so s will remain constant and n is variable now first i will put the value of n is equal to 3 so 3 minus 3 i will get 0 so 0 into p3 when i will put n is equal to 4 okay because n runs from 3 to 7 n is equal to 4 so 4 minus 3 into pn so i will get 1 p4 okay after that 5 minus n is equal to 5 so 5 minus s that is 5 minus 3 i will get 2 p5 okay <coughs> after that five, uh, 6 minus 3 that is 3 into p6 and then 7 minus s that is 7 minus 3 4 p7 okay after that i will put the value of p sorry p3 p4 p5 p6 and p7 now from this after multiplying with 0 this term will become 0 now i will start from p4 okay now p4 that is when n is greater than 4 here n is equal to 4 it means that and uh, s is equal to 3 now we know that s is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4 it means that we are using this method because here number of servers are less than number of customers so 1 upon s factorial s raised to power n minus s lambda upon mu raised to power n p0 now while using this method 1 upon s factorial okay 3 factorial 3 raised to power n minus s here n is equal to 4 okay so 4 minus 3 into lambda upon mu now lambda upon mu is <coughs> 6 i had find it the value of lambda upon mu 6 raised to power 4 okay and p0 i will take common and write outside the terms okay similarly this one okay 1 upon s factorial that is 3 factorial 3 raised to power n minus 3 that is 5 minus 3 okay into 6 raised to power 5 okay after that 3 upon s factorial that is 3 factorial s raised to power n minus s that is 6 minus s into 6 raised to power 6 and plus 1 upon 4 upon 3 factorial 3 raised to the power 7 minus 3 into 6 raised to the power 7 okay into p0 now i had written here 1 upon 3 factorial into 3 6 raised to the power 4 plus 2 into 6 raised to the power 5 3 factorial into 3 square okay this term okay and this and p0 is 1 upon 1114 from 41 sorry from here okay now after calculating the values i will get 3.09 cars so it means that expected number of cars in the queue is 3.00 sorry 3.09 cars now i will calculate second part find the average number of customers in the system during peak hour now we have to find out the average number of customer in the system now from here i will use this one method okay so average number of customer in the system will become lq that is number of customers in the queue plus lambda upon mu into 1 minus pn okay so i will use this ls lq plus lambda into 1 minus pn upon mu which is equal to lq and lambda upon mu lambda upon mu is 6 so 6 into 1 minus pn now pn is probability of n customer that is probability of 7 customer in the system it means that probability of 7 customer in the system or we can say that probability that the customers will come into the system but does not join the system okay and 1 minus p7 implies that probability that the customers will come into the system and join the system okay this is very important to remember so again i will repeat p7 is probability that the customers come into the system but does not join the system okay this is full capacity and 1 minus p7 is probability that the customers come into the system and join the system 
now we will calculate so 6 into 1 minus this values 1 upon s factorial 1 upon 3 factorial s is equal to 3 into 3 raised to the power capital n minus this that is 7 minus 3 4 into lambda upon mu is 6 so 6 raised to the power 7 into p0 so p0 is 1 upon 1141 now after simplifying i will get 0 0.5 into 6 that is 3 okay now ls that is expected number of customers in the system will become 3.09 okay because l cap is 3.09 plus 3 so it will become 6.09 cars okay now next part expected waiting time in queue and in the system now we have to find out the waiting time in the queue and in the system first we will find expected waiting time in the system as we know that expected waiting time in the system is equal to number of customers waiting in the system that is ls divided by effective arrival rate why we are using here effective arrival rate because there are n customers in the system there is a constraint of being n customer in the system okay so ls is 6.09 and we had calculated from here that 1 minus p7 sorry 1 minus p7 is 0 0.5 so i will put here 0 0.5 which is equal to 12.3 minutes it means expected waiting time in the system is 12.3 minutes now expected waiting time in the queue so expected waiting time in the queue is waiting time in the system minus 1 upon mu those customer who are taking the service so 1 upon mu will become 6 okay because mu is 1 by 6 so 1 upon 1 by 6 is equal to 6 and w is from here is 12.3 and after simplifying i will get 6.3 minutes it means that waiting time in the queue is 6.3 minutes now at last we have to find average number of cars per hour that cannot enter the station because of full capacity so from here the expected number of cars per hour that can't enter enter the station so this is the expected number of cars per hour it means that one hour that is 60 minute i had written here 60 minute into arrival rate that is lambda into pn pn means that the probability that the station is full okay it means that probability that the station has seven cars so p7 lambda is equal to 1 and 60 minutes after simplifying i will get 30.4 it means that 30.4 car per hours cannot enter the station because of full capacity so friends if you like my video please subscribe my channel and share this video with your friends thanks for watching